So I have some provisions at home that we might not necessarily have blocks and straps and bolsters. So I've grabbed some pillows from my sofa, some books to use as blocks, and a blanket as a bolster. So if you have any of that in your house available, you might want to bring that up, uh, closer to your mat so that you have the ability to modify if needed. Coming onto your hands and knees, actively root through the palms, through the knees, make them nice and hips width to give your low back some space. With the inhale, feel your sternum lengthen forward and lift up through your shoulders. And then actively draw the chest back in as you firm the belly up. More of an action from the chest as you breathe in open and as you breathe out round. The neck, the shoulders will follow. Allow the movement to come from the heart. Full breath in. Mm, long breath out. Good. So you can continue with the standard cow and cat. If you'd like to augment it, you can extend opposite arm, opposite leg, full breath in, long breath out, pull it in and round it out. Same action as cow and cat, but the arm and the leg create added weights. So really engage the muscles from the underside to give your body as much support and stability as you can. One more time on this side. And then release opposite hand, opposite arm. Again, lengthen with the breath in and exhale on the breath out. Take that four more times. Three. Two. Good. One more. Good. Released hand needs the to the mat, step it back into your high plank. Strong arms here, strong belly, strong thighs. The crown of the head isn't dropping. You're actually lifting it and extending it forward as you press through the hands and the feet, press out through the heels. So as you rock forward and back, you can feel that you're keeping the entire core, thighs, and arms strong and long to support you no matter which direction you move. From here, take a full breath in and exhale, hinge at the hips, draw them up and back, press through the palms. So let's do that a few times more. Inhale, high plank. Exhale, down dog. Good. If you have any back issues, you can continue with this movement or bend the knees and draw the hips back to the heels, giving your back a nice stretch, and then take it back to high plank into down dog. Just a few more breaths here, working out the shoulders and the hips. Good. One more. Breath in. Mm, long breath out. Downward facing dog. Walk it out. Lag it out. Any motion that feels good to relieve and release any tension in the lower body. Good. From here, step your left foot to the middle of your mat. Raise the right leg high. It doesn't need to be a long, strong, uh, a high lift, but press it long and strong. And then draw your knee to your nose and press through the hands as you lift your knee closer to your chest. Hold it here for three. Pulse it for two. One more. Step it into your runner's lunge. Good. So again, if you need a little bit of support here, you might only bring a few blocks for an added lift. Fire up the left thigh so that it's not drooping and sagging, but you're creating a nice long line to support the hips and create this beautiful diagonal from the crown of the head through the heel. Good. As you lower your left knee to the mat, uncurl the left toes, press down through the back foot and drag the right foot in. Firming belly to spine. Take that up. Reach it out from the fingers, from the heart into the fingers. Good. Full breath in. Exhale into a slight back bend. Elbows draw down the back as you still continue lifting from the sternum and firming from the belly. Good. On the next inhale, reach up once again. Neutralize. As you gaze forward, create a nice and long diagonal. Arms reach up as the thigh activates and the core helps to support. One big breath, inhale. 
Exhale your left hand to the block or the mat. Reach your right arm out to the side like a wing. Keeping your hips square, gently rotate your right ribs up. With full breath in, and release back around. Good. Remove any blocks from your mat. Step it back into high plank and hold. We're taking side plank, right arm high. So spin your heels to the left. Fire up the thighs, the glutes, the belly, and reach up. We need to modify with the knee to the mat. You're welcome to. Create long lines. Full breath. One big, one big inhale and clear away. Back to high plank. If you need, drop your knees for added stability. Elbows tight to the ribs all the way to the floor. Baby cobra. Tops the feet root. Fire up the thighs and the belly. Even engage your glute muscles, supporting your low back. Lift from your sternum. Full steady breath. Keep the crown of the head lengthening forward. Feel your toes drop back, creating more length so that you arch the back, creating space within each vertebra. One long breath in, lift up, and exhale, release. Tabletop or high plank, full breath in. Downward facing, long breath out. Reset, reconnect. You'll hear my voice sometimes sound like I'm having difficulty breathing. It's different to talk and move. One breath at a time. Reset. Clear it away. All right, right foot steps to the center of your mat. Left leg lifts, strong and long. Not too high so that you force the ribs to drop out. Come through high plank, knee to the nose, and press down. Lift the knee. Pulse it up for three, two, one, step it up, runner's lunge. Good. Nice long line from the heel to the crown of the head. I lift your torso a little off your thighs. You start to activate the core. Good. Lengthen it any bit more and then release your right knee to the mat. Keep the left root through the top of the right foot. Drag the left heel back. Engaging glutes and core. Reach up. Full breath in. Long breath out. Open up into a little back bend. Feel the whole front body expanding. The hips through the heart. Breathe out through the crown of the head. Big inhale. And release. Sweep high. Curl your right toes under. Find that nice diagonal. A lot of core legs from here. Lengthen any bit more. Keep that length. Release hands to the mat. Maybe to the blocks. To the books. Left arm like a wing. And keep that alignment as you rotate from the ribs to the sky. That right thigh stays strong and long. Keeping your hip in line with the left. Another full breath in and clear it away. And move any books out of your way. Step it back, high plank. Strong belly and thighs. Take it into side plank once again. So the nice thing about looking on a webcam is you actually have a little bit of a mirror. So you can see if you're dropping in your hip or you're over kicking. So try to find that neutral and engage the belly, glutes, and thighs to stabilize. One big breath here. Clear it away, high plank pulls. Again, option to drop your knees, lower all the way to the floor. This time, find baby cobra, maybe cobra, or a dog, your choice. But long through the arms, if you're in a dog, strong through the thighs, and firm through the belly. Dragging your heart forward and up once again. Take one big breath in. Clear it away. Downward facing dog. Three breaths here. Good. Bend the knees. Look to the hands. Walk or step to the front of your mat. Lift your feet and hips with here. So we're giving our back a little more breathing room. Take a nice flat back and firm your belly to your spine. Feel that you're supporting this flat back from the underside. But keep the leg, bend the knees and drop the hips all the way down. See how they're way down in line with the knees? Now bring your forearms on your thighs. This is your low skier. This gives you a little bit of stability if your forearms are on the thighs. You want to kick up the core, reach the arms forward. They reach. Exhale, sweep them back. 
reach. Sweep them back. One more. Good. Root to rise all the way up. Big stretch. All the way back down. Hinge at the hips. Land your forearms on the thighs. Take a breath in. Good. Planting your hands, step the left foot back. Reach out through the right arm, gentle spinal twist. Release into high plank, hold. Side plank, right arm high. Big lengthening inhale. And a long exhale. High to low. Drop your knees if you need it. Halfway down or all the way. You've got choices. Full breath in, pause. Empty through, down and facing. Take a long breath in. And a long breath out. And then raise the right leg. Step it up into runner's lunge. Reach your arms diagonally so you're firing up the core. Step into your low skier. Big inhale. Exhale the arms back. Root to rise. Full reach. All the way back down, low skier. Inhale. Plant the hands. Step the right foot back. Runner's lunge. Stem through the left arm. Open it up. Big breath. Release back. Step back. High plank hold, side plank. Full lengthening inhale from the crown of the head through the heels and clear it away high to low. Breath in, breath out. Take a long breath here. Feel your hips draw away from your armpits. Side away. Letting the crown of the head soften, your heels melt. This time left leg lifts on the inhale. Step it up into runner's lunge, nice and controlled. Abdominal strength lifts you off your thigh. Reach out, step forward, inhale, exhale, sweep them back. Root to rise, all the way back down. Let's do that one time more on each side. Inhale in, left foot steps back, open it up. Step it back, high plank. Fire up the thighs and belly, side, side plank. Good. High to low. At any point, you need a little more modification. Knees to the mat, cow and cat, two tags. Right side, runner's lunge. Lengthen out. Step forward. Stay firm. Inhale. Form your belly to your spine. Exhale, sweep it back. Root to rise. All the way back down. One big inhale. This time, as you plant your hands, right foot steps back. Fire up the right thigh, open up the left ribs. Step it back into your high plank. Take it into side plank. Nice full breath in. Long breath out, high to low. Inhale. And a long exhale. Take a long breath here. Open your mouth, clear it away. In fact, walk your hands a little closer to your feet. Let's give our hamstrings a nice stretch. Take your right hand to the outside of your left calf. Pushing with your left hand, pulling in with your right hand. Look up under your left armpit. Keep your kneecaps lifting. Engage your quads. Even here, your hips are drawing away from your armpits. So let's stretch through the lower body. Release. Right hand to the mat, left hand to the outer side. Pull it in as you push the ground away. And then look up under your right armpit. Good. Release your hands back to that. Keep walking them closer towards your feet. Once again, come into your low skier forearms on the thighs. Belly strong here. Ribs are engaged. Point in and up. And your chest is still lengthening as the shoulders move away from the ears. Talk about all this because as we extend our arms typically in chair pose, we tend to overarch and drop out the front side. But we need that stability for the back side. Keep the length here. Firmness from the other side as the hands come to heart center. Find a twist to the right. So that elbow might hover off your knee. If you're finding it's just too tight in your lumbar area this morning, you could even take a high twist. You could even take a side crow for the, some of you that are looking to do a little bit more 
hands off to the right side. I'm not even going to demo it because without warming up both sides, I know that I'll tweak that on my back. Go ahead and draw your hips back, lift in your sternum forward, create length in the spine, open up through the ribs. For three, two, good. One big breath in, release back to low sphere if you need a little stability. Or your belly up and land your forearms on your thighs. Good. Now extend the arms again, engaging the core, glutes, and thighs. Keep that engagement. Hands to heart center. I know you're feeling it. I am too. Left elbow to left knee. That right knee wants to squeak forward. Look down. Draw the hip back. Even sink back. So you're more weighting into the heels than you are into the balls of the feet. Now lengthen your sternum through your shoulders. Soften your shoulders from your ears. And rotate from the left ribs. A full breath in. A long breath out. Good. Three more. Two. Good. Full breath in. And clear it away. Ragdoll. So needed here. So needed. Opposite hand to opposite elbow. Let your head hang heavy. You can play with lunging into one side and then the other, bending one knee and then the other. That creates a little different sensation than just swaying your torso from thigh to thigh. Final feels good right here to you. But take it slow. With each breath in, you move to one side. Each breath out, you move to the other. Good. When you're ready, take a full breath through center. Clear it away, plant your hands, and walk it all the way back out into your high plank. Full breath in to lengthen. Exhale, down dog, or flow, right? Some of you are creating a flow here. Go ahead and take it. Bending your knees. Draw your hips to your heels to lengthen your low back. Leave any strain, and then come back up, downward facing. All right, left foot steps to the middle of your mat. Right leg lifts high. Step it up into your warrior one. Yeah, so I actually did shift our left foot to the center of the mat. Typically, I'll say widen your stance. So feel how this feels a little different. So definitely more of a balance with your feet closer to the center line. If you need to reset and widen it, definitely do what you need to stabilize. Get nice and low in the lunge. But what needs to counteract that is that firmness in the back thigh. So lift through the back of the quad, the hamstring area, as you engage the quad and press your left heel down. Good. Square your hips to the front of your mat. Firm your belly to your spine once you get a reach up with a big inhale. Exhale your elbows down and back. Keep drawing them down until you bind your hands. Use the knuckles to draw shoulders away from the ears. Lift your heart. For two, one big breath in. Lead with your heart forward and fold it over your front thigh. Now, if you come inside your thigh, that's perfectly fine. Just notice that right hip. It wants to jut all the way out. I want you to pull it in and shift your hips back so that left heel is grounded. And then let the head get even heavier. Humble your warrior. We are strong. We're capable. By being humble doesn't take that away from us. There's many things that aren't always in our control. The one thing we can control is our breathing and choosing to stay calm and peaceful. Take one more big breath in. Exhale, release into downward facing dog. Good. Stay or flow. Full breath. Either way. Carry it through an up dog. Fill the lungs. Empty through downward facing. Good. Again, choose to keep your right foot where it was or step it to the center of your mat, raising your left leg. Step it up into your warrior one. Again, notice how it feels a little bit different, that you're balancing a little bit more to the center line. 
compensate for stability by engagement of the thighs, of the glutes, and the core. Fire up the back thigh, press it to the back and you'll feel the glute muscle engage more. Right heel grounding. As you firm belly to spine, lift through the sternum, big breath in, reach up. Long breath out, open up. A little back in here. Don't be afraid to draw the shoulders down back. Binding your hands behind your back. Continue drawing knuckles down, shoulders down. Fill up and lift up from the sternum for three. Two. Go ahead, one big breath in. Lead with the sternum forward, fold. Now you'll have a better view here. My hip obviously is jutting out. I'm pulling it in actively, drawing it to the back of the room, and then forming it in, shifting my weight back so the right heel is rounding. I'm going to fire up the right thigh. And let the head get heavy, full breath. For three. One big inhale, clear it away, step it back, downward facing, neutralize your spine, and then carry through high to low. Don't cruise through it, firm the thighs, lift the heart, empty through downward facing. Take a breath, clear it away. Bend the knees, lift to the hands, bring your shaft forward. Inhale, length. Exhale, low sphere. Reach out through the arms, take it a little bit higher without popping the ribs. Take a big length and inhale and release. Hands to the mat, step it back. You can modify here or vinyasa, you can skip it, but breathe all the way through to down dog. Right side, warrior one. Move down, rise up, big inhale. Long exhale, release downward facing. Carry through high to low. Especially here, this is where you can start modifying if you're starting to feel it. Breath in. Breath out, root down, rise up, warrior one. Clear it away. Step it back, down dog, neutralize the spine. Firm the belly as you carry through your up dog, even here, firm the thighs, downward facing. Again, bend the knees, lift to the hands, cranch up forward, halfway lift. Low skier with the arms extended, find your chair, raise it up just a little bit, lengthen. And release, hands to the mat once again, flow. Right side, where you want, you know where you're going. Try not to cruise through it, full breath. Complete exhales. High to low, or cow and cat. All right, take a full breath in down dog and clear it away. Knees to the mat just for a moment. Go ahead, regroup, reset. If you're feeling it in the wrist, that was a lot of turn on this. Go ahead and plant the backs of your palms against one another. Gently push them together as you soften your shoulders down. Gently lift the wrists up. And while we're here, go ahead and curl your toes under you. Might as well make this. Advantageous to all our body parts as we can. Toes pose, firm belly to spine, lift sternum, press palms together. Good. Reach the arms, bring them through heart center, clasp the knuckles, press them away. Rise up once again through the palms, release them behind you. Nice full breath in, lengthen the arms back, lift them up as high as you can, and release back down. Roll your shoulders a few times, take a nice full breath in, and a long breath out. Go ahead, shake out the wrists, release the feet by tapping the tops of the feet into the soles of the feet, release. All right, maybe just a little bit of a back stretch here before we go again. I'm going to do a whole standing sequence now. Just draw a hip to one heel and then the other. If you want to make it a full circle around and back up. Those that know me know that I have back issues and I love any of these resets that help to neutralize me between each set. 
All right, so taking it back into downward facing dog. Raise your right leg only as high as your hip and dial the pinky toe down. So this is nice. I'm looking on my webcam. I can see when my toes turn out. That's my natural tendency. So dialing the pinky toe down, rotating the inner thigh out. So I'm using a lot of core, a lot of leg strength on both legs to hold this position. Now keep that right leg strong and long as you walk your hands back to your feet. Your narrow wall, make sure you don't go too far. All right, good. From here, coming into standing leg split. Now, for all of us, we're at different places. So standing leg split requires a lot of engagement of pushing through that left leg and forming up through the left quad, pushing through the right heel, lifting through the right heel. So you can stay here working into a balance. If you want to work into some jump ups, you can lower and lift the um, left leg with the right, coming into your handstand. And then the third option, <laughs> A, B, or C, is curtsy squats with me. Then both knees, drop it down and then press down to lift it up. We'll do that five times. Good. So I want you to find what resonates best with you here. There's no right or wrong, just be really in intentional about the breath, the movement, and the engagement to support it. Even when you get fatigued, breathe in more. Clear out the strain. One more time, curtsy squat. Good. Lift the right leg, press it away. Now. Draw your knee into your chest and slowly rise up. Here's the fun part when that leg's fatigued. Push down, lift up. Full breath in. Good. Step it forward, eagle it up. Left leg over, left arm under. Of course, you can hug your shoulders or just bring forearms together. But sink down. And the tendency here, <laughs> the tendency here is to want to lean forward. I want you to squeeze the belly of the spine and lift up your sternum and your elbows stack shoulders over hips. Nice back stretch this way. Good, on the next inhale, unwind the arms, stand tall, left knee to chest. As you step forward, take it into tree. Right foot to the inner thigh, shin ankle. Now, I know you want to raise your arms because that helps to balance. Why don't you press your hands firmly together and actively lift your sternum up to your thumbs. Go ahead, press through the feet, foot, <laughs> and even firm your glutes in towards one another as if your, your foot and your thigh are squeezing together. That will give your trunk more stability. Now, lengthen up through the branches. Reach your arms. Lift your heart, maybe lift your base. So grounding. Knowing that even how stable a trunk of a tree is, the tree actually does waver. It does move. It shifts with the wind and the circumstances around it. And yet it still stays solid and grounded. Gaze forward, draw your knee forward, take a high twist. If you want to catch your toe, you're welcome to. Maybe catch the outer right knee. Step it back into your warrior two. Beautiful warrior two here. I'm going to turn around just so I'm not facing the wall this way. You can hear me better. All right, so we're taking warrior one, left foot forward, arms extended. Go straight in the front leg, reach high, and open it up. Let's do that two more times. Gentle warrior. Good. This time, keep the arms where they are, straight in the front leg. Please make sure your back toes are dialed in about 10 degrees. It's going to help the hip rotate forward. Coming into Trikonasana, I'm going to show you two variations here on your mat. We you reach out, let the hand drop down, and the upper arm reach up. So it's a diagonal, parallel arm to the front leg. But the tendency here is to tip forward and jut our butts out. So if you have a ball accessible to you, then go ahead up against the wall. You see if you can align your hips and your shoulders on that wall. And the tendency here is the ribs and the abdominal wants to flare forward, draw the spine in to secure up against the wall as well. Good. Go ahead and give that a try. Notice how when your hand isn't connected to somebody, 
something, the bottom hand. You need a lot more engagement through the legs. So feel like you're squeezing the mat together between your feet. Inner thighs will engage, and that's going to give your core and your back a lot more stability. Good. Full breath in, rise up, pivot your toes towards the long edge of your mat. Setting up for forward fold, hands to your low back, heart lifts, breathe the lungs open. Lengthen through your sternum, keep a flat back as you fold forward and let your head hang heavy. Good, from here, options. Hands can be right under your shoulders, maybe to books to bring the ground up to you. You can bind your toes. You can turn your fingers behind you and walk them through. All three variations, the, the idea is to bring your chest through your legs and lift your hips so you're opening up the backside body, lengthening up the spine. So even with hands on the mat, it's an active pose, pressing through the entire palm, draw your elbows in and push the ground forward to draw your chest through your legs. Now don't force this. You'll feel the hips lift, the hamstrings lengthen. Mm -hmm. Now some of you might be playing with a headstand, if you're working on that, the fingertips are in line with the toe tips. Your elbows draw into 90 degrees. Really press through the palms. Make sure the crown of the head is a nice five inches in front of your fingertips, creating a triangle effect. Good. And as you press the hands, the heels start getting lighter. All right, take a flat back on your inhale. It comes over time. Trust me, I didn't just wake up and do that one day. Go ahead and turn to the front of your mouth, taking runner's lunge on the left side. Lower your right knee and draw your hips back. So you have a choice here, half or full. On one split. You might just want to start with the half just for a moment. Let your hip, your hamstring adjust. You can point and flex the toe a little bit. Been having a lot of discussions lately with other yogis about whether the foot needs to be flexed here to protect the knee and the quad. So feel what feels right to you. For me, and maybe from years of practicing, I'm used to engaging my quad muscle and pressing my heel. But for others, they feel a little more supported with the toes pointed. Take this into a little bit of side stretch, walk your hands forward and out to the left. Good. Back to your center. Just for fun, if you want, open it all the way up. Give yourselves a good stretch on both sides. Lifting through your sternum, softening up through the shoulders. Here's the fun part. Press the hands down. Lift that left foot enough to plant firmly to the mat. Take it this into a runner's lunge. Find your way through three-legged dog into a flip dog. So bend your left knee. Open up the hip and rotate it around. If that's not accessible to you, just turn around on your mat. Plant your hands and your feet and your shoulders and knees. And then lift up into reverse tabletop. Nice long breath in. Open up the front body. And clear the way back around down dog. Take your flow. High to low. Full breath. Clear way down or facing dog. Uh, give yourself a moment here. Three breaths. Reset the spine. Realign the spine. Reconnect to the breath. Good. Let's do that whole sequence on the other side. Decide the left leg lifts in line with the hip. Notice the toes. Notice the hip. Square the hip. Rotate the inner left thigh up and press that heel to the back wall. Really press it strong and long. Walk your hands back towards your right toes. Again, right up on the wall. And you have choices here. You can jump up into handstand. You can work into balance here, standing leg split, both legs actively working to push away and squeeze in and up, or curtsy squat. Bend the knees, drop it down. Don't tap the foot to the floor. Don't release it to the floor. And then press away to lift up. 
drop it down, but it's hovering, and then press to lift. Good. Four more. Three. Two. And one more. Good. Here comes the balance. So knee into the chest. Press through that right foot. Fire up your core and lift through your sternum. Reach the arms high. Big stretch. Good. Step it forward, eagle. Right leg over, right arm under. Again, as if you're sitting in a chair, bring your back up against that wall. Back into the chair. Shoulders over hips. Sink it down and squeeze your thighs. See if that doesn't give you more stability. Elbows in line with the shoulders. Nice steady breath. Steady gaze. Go ahead, release the bias. Sweep high, full breath in. Step forward, take it into tree. If you're feeling wobbly, like you just can't get out of your head today, balances are really hard. Just be compassionate with yourself and be patient. You can even bring your toe to the mat and your heel to your ankle. And even that, I want you to feel everything squeezing in and from the hips down, pushing down. So you're grounding and rooting your throat. Then lift through the sternum. Lift through the ears, through the sides of the neck expand. So you can settle your gaze to your fingertips. Don't cheat yourselves. This is a balancing practice. Good. Now the arms reach high. Lengthen up from the armpits to the fingers. Feel the whole side body extend. Maybe the gaze shifts up. Good. One full reach on the inhale. Gaze forward, draw the knee forward. Take a high twist to the left. Again, you can hold your knee. You can catch your toe if you'd like. Maybe you look back as you step back into your warrior two. So dial your left toes forward, just setting it up for kicking off center in and out. It also helps for warrior two to open the hips and guide this right knee over your second toe. Squeeze your right glute to help pull that opening of the hips, lengthening of the spine up, stacking again, shoulders over hips. Straighten up as you reach up on the inhale, holding it back up on the exhale. Two more. Good. Keep the arms open. Straighten the front leg. Draw the right hand forward. And then just a nice diagonal if you're flying your airplane. You can see that it's parallel to the front leg. Now, especially here, if you're looking on your camera, you can see if you hyperextend, that means there's a little arc or bow in the knee area. So a slight, slight bend as you push the ball of the foot down, squeeze the kneecap up, engage the thigh. Good. Now, again, that dragging action of feet together. So both thighs give the core and the back more stability. Burn your belly and your ribs in and find that those left ribs are rotating to the left hand. There's a lot going on here. It's an amazing opening when done properly to align spine, to lengthen and extend the legs, the arms, open your whole front body with a big breath in. Then a long breath out, hold. On the next inhale, rise up. Good, pivot your toes towards the long edge of your mat again. Mind your hands. Open up with a breath in, drag the shoulders down and back. Lead with your sternum, and once again, forward fold. Now the tendency here is to not trust in your body's strength. So we typically want to lean back into the heels to resist leaning forward. But what I want you to do is press your feet firmly down, squeeze your knees up, and squeeze your thighs. Now feel your hips Lift up a little bit towards the sky. And with that lift, you get longer through the spine and heavier through the crown of the head. So give that a try. Don't force anything. It's with breath. You lift through the hips. You lengthen through the spine and release through the crown of the head with the exhale. Take that three more times.
Go ahead, releasing your hands under your shoulders. Take a flat back on your inhale. Turn your heels in. Squat down and then straighten up. Yeah, squat it down and straighten it up. Uh, do that one more time. Yeah, and then give yourself some time to go ahead and lunge it out. You might need to move your feet back to parallel to the edges of your mat. Lunge it out if you feel like this isn't enough challenge and you need more. Hands to heart center. Then it's just leg strength. You always flex through the extended leg, taking it to the other side. It's not feel good. One big breath here. And clear it away. Back through center. Walk it around into your runner's lunge on the right side. Good. Lengthen out your spine so it's not collapsed. And then lower your left knee to the mat. Find your half palm on split. Noticing that it's not hips down to the heel. Hips in line with the knee. And you're pressing through the heel or reaching through the toes so that you create a nice long line through the back of the right hamstring. One thing I want to talk about, especially since I'm looking in the webcam, you can see my, um, my posture. We tend to take the path again of least resistance, which means rounding your back and dropping your neck. That feels a lot less intense for the hamstring to me. So what I want you to do is firm your belly and ribs in, lengthen your sternum forward and a slight squeeze of the shoulder blades, just a slight squeeze. And the crown of the head is an extension of the spine. So keep lengthening. And you'll notice if you keep that extension as you lower over your front thigh, you're going to open your front up a lot more. But keep, the, keep uh, holding here or walk over to the right side and reach out through the fingers, getting a little bit of a different stretch. Good. Bring it back to center. And again, you've got a few breaths if you want to take it into your full stretch, your full high mode split, just to open up both sides, open up the hips. Again, lengthen and lift. Try not to allow the shoulders to come up to the ears. It's softening through the upper body so you can breathe down into the lower body. All right. Push through the hands. Drag your right foot back in. Curl your left toes under. Runner to lunge. Reset. Find your three-legged dog. Bend the knee. Open it up. And flip your dog. Good. Press down. Make sure the feet are parallel to one another. Press to lift. Squeezing glutes, engaging belly. Even here, support the low back. Create more length so that you can lift from the rib cage and open up the lumbar. One big breath in. Long breath out all the way around. Downward facing dog. And take a flow. Good, full breath here, and clear it away, good. Look to your hand, step or jump to find your mat. Come to seated, I'm just gonna turn around so I'm facing the camera. We're gonna take a figure four stretch, either in seated or in reclined, and I'll show you again, you can use the wall to your advantage in this as well. So cross your right ankle over your left knee, and flex your foot. So I'm mirroring you right now. Good. Now you'll notice once you've crossed your ankle that you're going to feel some tightness in the glute and outer thigh. And that's what we're actually trying to release. So you can either scoot your hips, actually keep your hips there, scoot your heel back towards your glutes, and lift through your sternum and draw it a little closer towards your front, your shin. Good. Or you can recline all the way to the floor. Alternatively, you can be up against the wall. And the wall is going to give you a nice support to push against as you bring your ankle across your knee and your bottom foot closer to your chest. So right now, I feel like this is way more stretched than I can do when I was on the floor because I have short arms. They're like little Tyrannosaurus Rex arms. <laughs> All right, take a full breath in. Lengthen your spine so you're not collapsing into the low back. And release that ankle, stretch it out, draw it in, move it around, loosen up the hip. Now let's take it to the other side. Good. You flex the foot. This knee wants to draw into your chest because that's again least resistant. 
Go ahead and let it open up so you feel the stretch through the glute and the thigh. Sit up nice and tall, lift from your sternum, even lift through your ears so you're elongating your neck. Take a full breath in and a long breath out. Releasing that left leg. Stretch it out, draw it in, create some knee circles, loosen it up. Uh, rolling down onto our backs. Give your knees a good squeeze first. Give them a good squeeze. And actually, let's take a spinal twist before we roll down. <laughs> My bad, you guys. It'll be easier and see that. So go ahead and look over your right shoulder, rotating your right ribs to the back of your mat. Back through center. Squeeze the knees. Sit up nice and tall. You want to sit up tall to create the length in the vertebra. And then go ahead and take it in the other direction. Doesn't have to be an aggressive twist. I actually like the seated position better than reclined because it allows you that lengthening that you don't quite get on the floor. Back through center. Now we can roll on down. And this last pose is really Yogi's choice. So as you roll onto your backs, if you find that you're craving a bridge pose, plant your feet, lift your hips, squeeze your glutes and belly to support your back. If you're craving an inversion, Maybe just a simple Vikarita Karate. You can take your books as blocks on your tailbone, raise your legs in the air. Maybe your arms in the air. You can even do this up against the wall, of course. There's something else that you're craving. Maybe it's a simple happy baby to broaden and flatten the back. Try to create long, steady breaths once again. Evening out the inhale and the exhale. Good. Three more breaths, no matter where, which asana you're in, no matter where you're at. Good. Full breath in. And as you clear it away, release out of this asana. Make sure you remove any books from behind you or props and give your knees a good squeeze hug everything into the midline even your forehead to your knees squeeze in with a big breath in and open it all up with the breath out into shavasana extend your legs long and wide maybe a pillow under each knee extend your arms down towards your toes and then spread your arms wide turn your palms up feel your shoulders soften down Maybe you take one extra pillow and plant it on top of your belly. Such a nice sensation for your body to feel comforted and supported. It's that blanket effect. You're safe. You're secure. You're here now. You're feeling your face softening. Feeling your jaw release. Letting go of the control of breathing. Feeling your muscles softening, the shoulders, your arms get heavy. As your body becomes aware of the ground, I call it the abdominals, the glutes. The legs get heavy. You're safe. You're supported. You're here now.
you're giving this time to yourselves. You're worthy. All the work that you've done this morning to clear out the tension, to create openness and lightness. Let all settle over you. Perhaps you even bring a smile to your face. Yes, even here in Shavasana. You'll have a smile that creates so much lightness on the inside, and brightness. And you hold on to that. There's not many things that we can control in our lives, but we can control our feelings and control our breath. And with each breath, we feel ourselves relax and release. Each breath, each breath, we relax and release. Gently wiggle your fingers and toes. Staying on your backs, take a full body stretch. Reach up overhead, reach down the mat with your toes, stretch it out. Big breath in and a long breath out. Hug your knees into your chest and roll into the hand position. Just allow yourselves to settle here for a moment, observing the changes that you've created in your body feeling the sensations in your body, but also around you, that openness around your heart, that lightness that you've created, the ground, the stability still below you, consistently there for you. Just take time throughout your day when you feel like it's getting ahead of you and take that time to come back to your breath. You're in control of your feelings. You're in control of your emotions through one breath at a time. As you press yourselves to seated, sit up nice and tall. Firmly press your palms to heart center with your eyes closed. Take a full breath in. And a long breath out. Let's do that two more times. Breathe it in. Open your mouth. Let it go. Last time, full breath. And a complete exhale. The smile to your face. Lightness in your hearts. And gratitude to yourselves for showing up on your webcam early this morning. My gratitude to all of you. We bow forward. Namaste. Namaste.